Welcome to Buy the Books, the podcast helping business owners navigate the complex world of business, tax, and bookkeeping. Now to the owner and president of Sakhalin, Lindsay Klein. Thank you for joining me, everyone. This is Lindsay Klein with Sakhalin, S-A-K-L-I-N-E dot com. I have an awesome guest with me today, Steve Stomp who is a licensed health and life insurance agent, but also a CPA, not currently practicing as one, but it led to a conversation when we met the other day and I mentioned I was working on a podcast topic about how to find the right CPA. And Steve ran with it. Like he had so much to say on this topic that I asked him, I said, would you be willing to do this with me? Because you have some great suggestions for it. So that's how this whole episode came about. So we're going to talk today to business owners specifically, but a lot of it I think is relevant for personal tax returns also, but basically how to find the right CPA for your business. What would be the first thing that you would suggest to business owners when they're looking for a tax professional? Right, right. Well, thanks, first of all, for having me. Of um, course. I've actually been on both sides of this um, decision. I've been an accountant. I've been a business owner. So when you and I were talking over lunch, yes, I just gave you a, a, probably a dozen ideas right off yes, the top. Yes, yes. Well, I was the, writing fast. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the number one is business owners need to look at their CPA as – basically their financial officer for their business. So regardless of your size, if you were to hire a CFO, you would run them through a pretty rigorous interview process. And certainly you want to make sure that you're going to like working with the individual that you hire as your, as your business CPA, but then not just like them, but trust them. Because what a lot of business owners don't realize is your CPA should be kind of your trusted advisor. So when you get to that point in your business of, should I now expand and purchase a bigger building or build a new building, or should I buy that piece of equipment? That accountant should advise you on when is the right time to do it, how do you do it with with automobiles? Do you lease or do you buy? What's the impact of that to your bottom line? So you need to know and trust your accountant yes. and make sure that it's someone who, first and foremost, you're going to like working with because they're going to be pretty in your business, in your weeds. They should, at least, in my opinion, be, be that trusted advisor. Well, and I think that there is a misnomer out there that because someone has that certified public accountant certification, they must be good. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in my bookkeeping business, we deal with a lot of CPAs. That's one of the first things I ask my clients when we onboard is who is your tax preparer? And I immediately start building rapport with that person because we have to be in continuity with each other. So I have dealt with numerous CPAs in my life. Just because they have a certified public accountant certification does not mean they're good. (laughs) Well, and, you know, they're they're just a business owner like you. So Mm -hmm. in your business, you might have a niche that you serve, and they probably have a niche as well. So they may just work on the books and don't do any taxes, or they may just do taxes, or they may do like a fractional CFO where they really just like doing advising, and then they work with someone like Mm -hmm. you to keep up with the books. So really understand what it is that their niche that they serve, and is that serving your business needs? Yes. So yes, they might not be a great accountant, but it may be more they're great accountant, but they're, they're serving a niche that doesn't really meet your broad business needs. Yes, that is a factor also to consider is, are they good in my industry? Mm -hmm. Whatever it is that your business is doing. Oh my gosh, industry specific um, knowledge is key. So there's a lot of industries that have a lot of regulation Mm -hmm. built around them, either from state and local governments or even federal governments. The example I like to use a lot is property management. So if you're a property manager, so like if you own a home and I'm, I'm, you don't want to deal with rents and getting tenants, you'll hire a property manager to manage that property. Mm. Well, that property manager is a fiduciary of your funds and basically of your asset, which is a home. There's a lot of state regulations and even audits that those property managers go through to make sure that they're keeping the funds separate, not just for your home, but all the homes in their portfolio. 
If your accountant doesn't understand the specifics of your industry, they can cause a lot of problems for you, especially when it comes time for that local jurisdiction to come in and audit your books, and then they're not prepared in the right way for the for the audit that's going to pursue. And I remember you telling me that was especially important when it comes to industries that are highly regulated, mm-hmm. that that is those industries are very important to make sure your tax professional knows your industry and the specific regulations for that industry, which uh, is also goes into um, what is what for CPI. I know you guys have to take um, a certain number of credits. What is it? Continuing education. Continuing education. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so you have a certain number of hours you have to take, but I've noticed, you know, in the bookkeeping industry too there's a lot of educational things we aren't required to have those ce credits but Mm -hmm. i notice on a lot of things that i look at it'll say how many credit hours um you know a specific course or webinar whatever it's worth but some of the stuff that i've seen it on i'm like how can that qualify (laughs) as continuing education because there's no way this is adding any tax knowledge so it caused me to wonder um is that part of the problem with some CPAs is that they're, the, the continuing education that they're getting may not necessarily be quality continuing education that's really keeping them up to date with the tax laws? Right, yeah. Well, so CPAs, they have they get to choose what um, continuing education they participate in. And is with, that true for all the hours, or is there yeah, some specific things you have yeah, to have? Yeah, so um, I think it's every three years you have to have an ethics course. Okay. So beyond that, you can fill your hours with what, whatever topics you want. So it can be um, focused on just being an accountant, running an accounting firm, which has its own nuances. You've got marketing, you've got, you know, dealing with uh, staff accounts underneath you. So, you know, providing education for them to run their business effectively, but then also providing education to service their, their, their clients. So is it possible to fill all of your continuing education credits with things that have nothing to do with taxes? Yes. And you can do it on soft <laughs> skills. Yes, absolutely. But um, all accountants are held to a standard of if you take on an engagement that you don't know how to do, you are supposed to go learn how to go do that. Mm. And do it with high quality and with ethics and make sure that you meet the standards of of your client. So it's not that accountants are uh, prevented from taking on new engagements that they're not, um, they haven't done in the past. But when they do, they're responsible for going and learning that part of their business and that um, the skills that are needed. So then I would say one of the good questions to ask when looking for a CPA is asking them, what type of continuing education do you take? What do you do to keep your knowledge of the tax laws sharp? Right, right. That would be a great question, I think, to ask. You know, don't just assume that they're keeping up to date with the laws, but ask them. Maybe ask for specific courses. What What are you taking this year? What do you think about that? Would Absolutely. that be a good angle yeah, to come at it? Taxes are always changing. So how are they going to keep up with the changing tax laws is a great question. But then, you know, there's two aspects to your accountant. One, they got to keep your books straight. And then two, they got to complete your taxes. And so what are they doing to understand the the scope of their responsibilities in both of those areas. Now, if they're in a niche, maybe they're just a tax accountant. Obviously, they're not going to be as worried about their continuing education in managing financial books. They're going to really be focused or should be focused on taxes and preparing taxes and making sure that you maximize your tax benefit underneath the law. And I would say a good uh, suggestion for business owners would be to decide before even starting on this journey of finding a tax professional, what is it, define what is it I actually am looking for? Because there are tax preparers that are strictly just that. They just prepare taxes and that's it. But if you're looking for more consultative services, if you want more uh, tax strategy that would be a question to ask to make sure that the professional you're hiring offers those services because those are really two separate things. Absolutely, yes. Well, and think about who are you already using to manage your books. Maybe you've done it yourself within QuickBooks and you're just wanting someone to take that take that on. Mm-hmm. Or you've hired a bookkeeper that you like. So now it's time to go to that next level and have someone who can advise you on your business. Um, Yes, you need a tax preparer. So who's going to be that accountant who's going to work with you if you're the bookkeeper or your bookkeeper if you've hired one? Or maybe you you, um, have one on staff. 
so that they're going to work with you with you there. And you hit the uh, nail on the head, I think. Um, what do you want from your accountant? Mm -hmm. Do you just want tax advice and tax preparation? Do you want financial consultation of what should I do in my business to raise my bottom line, to drive my revenue? Are there efficiencies that I, as a business owner, I'm not seeing that that accountant is? And then how do they engage with you? Is it monthly? Is it quarterly? Is it a twice a year or once a year to look at your books and really advise you on how do you drive your business operationally so that you maximize all the efficiencies in the, in the numbers? And I would say even to kind of tail off of that, communication. Like there needs to be clear expectations from the beginning on what you expect in terms of communication. Yes. Do you expect to talk with this person every month, every week, every once a year? Because those expectations may not align with how they normally do business. So right. you've got to make sure you both are on the same page about how you're going to proceed with that and what method of communication. Are you expecting an hour-long phone call? Are you expecting just an email? Um, that, I think, goes a lot, a long way in helping that relationship yes. as it progresses because if you're expecting we're going to have an hour-long phone call every week and they're thinking they're just going to talk to you once a year – there's going to be some problems. Yes. So. And it should be documented in the agreement you have with the yes. accountant. How often am I going to have access to you to review my books and get your professional advice on my business? Yes. And then who are you talking with? Are they a one CPA shop? Well, obviously you're talking to the CPA. But if they're a, a, a multiple or they have multiple employees, they probably got staff accountants. They probably have uh, junior tax prep accountants. So who is it that you're going to be talking with, and is that person going to be able to be qualified to help you in your business? Those are things that you need to understand. Yes, that's a good point. Asking the question, who is actually going to prepare my tax return? Yes. And maybe it's multiple people. But it would be a great question to ask because a lot of companies are now outsourcing overseas. Yes. As soon as I posted a job ad on LinkedIn, and I think I did How it many on Indeed. How many did you get? <laughs> oh, my goodness. I was getting inundated with people all over the world. Right. I can do your taxes, you know, giving me all kinds of pitches. And um, oh, my goodness. Like, sorry, no, I only hire local. Like, call me old school. I want to see you face to face. I want to shake your hand. Yeah. I want to have a conversation, a coffee with you before I hire you. Right. <laughs> well, what's what's well, I mean, it's good and bad. I'm, I'm, our, our world economy is uh, across the world now. And you can do business with people across um, national boundaries, which is which is great for economy. But but for your business, what's happened now is CPAs use software to prepare yes. taxes and do books, and uh, they don't—they're not doing it by hand anymore. Well, with these software platforms nowadays, they can actually send your data um, offshore, mm -hmm. uh, any country in the world, where they can basically have accountants part of their staff. You know, do my air quotes staff. But they're not doing the return. They are somewhere else in the mm -hmm. world. And then they finally just review it and kind of give their uh, stamp of approval and signature on it as the, as the CPA. So that's really key is where is your data mm -hmm. going? And then how do they secure that data as well? And are you comfortable with someone in another country preparing your inf or taking your information and preparing maybe your tax return, maybe your books? And then knowing that amount of information about your business. Right, exactly. Yes, that's definitely critical to make sure you know where your data is. And yes. even your, your physical records, that's a good question to ask. How are they maintaining your books? Yes. Where are those files being kept? Who actually owns those files? Right. Those are all things that should be addressed in that contract when you first sign is, let's just say the relationship does go sour. What's going to happen with those records? Is it going to cost you money to get those records back? Right. Um, those are all questions to ask and make sure it's written in the contract. Yes. Well, and then how do you deliver them? Mm -hmm. So is it all electronic? Do they have a um, basically online uh, document vaults mm -hmm. where you supply all your information? You have basically a username and password to access your vault. They have one as the accountant, but no one else has it. And then all the data, all our stuff, sorry, all the documents are separated. So, you know, one client separate from another client, separate from another client. 
versus the worst thing is, you know, they just got a Dropbox and everyone just puts their files into the Dropbox. That's probably a, a warning sign that you might want to move on from that account. Really? You think so? Yeah, yeah. What, so what's wrong with that? Is Dropbox not um, well, secure? Well, just one, one generic Dropbox for, for all their clients. But uh, two, Dropbox... Oh, you mean so like all the files for every client's getting put in one place? Right, right, Okay. Right. okay. Probably a now, what if it was a, a an encrypted um, cloud service where so the client the, only had their own? A lot of the specific platforms for accountants, as the software for accountants that accountants use, has more secure platforms than Dropbox and a G Drive or anything like that. Okay. So if they're using... Um, a platform you haven't heard of is probably from one of their software providers that's providing a higher level of security for the documents. Okay. And it probably integrates with their software on the back end. I mean, technology is great nowadays. Yeah. So you can actually take your documents, upload them to the to the document vault, and on the back end for tax preparation, it can actually take data out of those documents and pop and, and populate it directly into their tax software. Oh, nice. So streamlining their entire process yeah. and increasing their accuracy. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Good to know. I'm 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 learning. <laughs> <laughs> Now, one thing you had mentioned when we talked was making sure that your CPA has relationships with tax attorneys. Can yes. you explain why that's important? Well, going back to accountants typically have a niche. Yes, there's some that do everything, all, meet all your business needs, mm -hmm. um, but they, they may or may not have tax attorneys on staff. So, unfortunately, being a business owner puts you at risk of being audited by the IRS. Typically, um, you're, you're more at risk because you've got a more complex tax return. And so what's going to happen when the IRS comes knocking? Will the accountant represent you? And should you need representation by an attorney, do they have access or do they have a tax attorney on staff that can represent you in that uh, fact where you're, you're being audited and there's kind of now a dispute? as to how your taxes have been prepared and how the IRS thinks they should have been prepared. In that situation, you're going to need a tax attorney. And will they? Will your accountant be able to represent you or bring representation to the table? So that is something that I think business owners really need to think about. Put yourself in the shoes of you've just gotten a letter from the IRS that you're being audited. Let's just work through that process. What's the first thing you're going to do? Well, probably call your tax preparer. Absolutely. <laughs> now, what if they're not in business anymore? Or That's what if they're not question. practicing anymore? Yeah. That's one thing is ask your potential CPA, what if you're not around when I get that letter from the IRS? Ask them that question. Are yeah. you going to be in business for a while? A, are you going to grow with me? Are you um, planning to do this for the long term? That right. would be a first question. If you're a startup business, what is your timeline? Are you 10, 20, 30 years of you know growing your business or more? And then have a frank conversation with the accountant that you're looking at. What is their exit, exit strategy? Because mm -hmm. they run a business as well. And if they're running up their business well, they should have an exit strategy. Well, it may be to pass it on to their uh, team members right. or to their family members that are involved in their practice. Or it may be, yeah, one day I'm going to put this practice and all the client clientele up for sale. So the question then is, and it should be discussed in the contract, if you're not in business anymore and I get audited, who am I supposed to right. talk to? Yes. Who's going to represent me? And are you going to represent me? Because maybe even they have no intention of representing you. So that would be a good question is even if you are practicing, are you going to represent me if I get audited by the right. IRS? Absolutely. And then the follow up question, are you going to charge me? Right. And if you are, what are the terms? And this should all be laid out in your engagement letter when you first sign on. What happens in the event of an audit? Absolutely. How much they're going to charge you to represent you? Um, and thinking about if you do have to get an attorney involved, okay, so if, do they have somebody that, like you said, that they have a relationship with? Or maybe the business owner should go ahead and find that person just to have them ready to go in the event that were to happen. Yes. Because the truth of the matter is, and you tell, correct me if I'm wrong, even if your taxes are perfect, you can be audited. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's, it's not, not that there's – just because you're audited doesn't mean that there's been an error. Right. It's just that you – came up into the system and right. now now an IRS auditor is looking really in details 
of of uh, of your tax return, right. asking questions about why is this expense on here versus, um, uh, you know, whether or not it should be or not. So yeah, it doesn't mean that there's been a mistake. It just means now they're taking a deeper look at your right. information. Right. Exactly. So. Is it, you think, important to have a CPA that's experienced and been through audits before in the past? Yes. So a lot of CPAs should be able to tell you kind of what their win rate is with the IRS. Oh, interesting. I never thought of that. Yeah. So, you know, how aggressive are they with fighting for you in your IRS audit? Ah. So, you know, you want them to be pretty aggressive because if they represented your information in the tax return, they should have a point of view on why that was the right tax handling of that financial situation, whatever it was. And so then that means... their win rate is going to be an indication of how successful they are getting that point of view over to the IRS. Because the IRS guidelines, yeah, they're in black and white. They're all written down in the IRS code, but they're subject to some interpretation. Mm -hmm. And so then it becomes a discussion between your accountant and the IRS auditor. And if you can have a point of view on why it makes sense to handle it that way, or the accountant can, oftentimes they can win that argument. And I will say this too, from the bookkeeping point of view, um, the a CPA is only going to be as good as the information oh, yeah. that he or she is given. So if they can immediately revert back to, well, that's what the client told me, or that's all the information I got from the client, that's not going to be a good audit argument if you're, <laughs> you're sitting in front of the IRS. Um, so from my standpoint as a, as a bookkeeping company, I am very much with my employees. We need to make sure we have good notes, oh, yeah. attach documents, have backups. So even if this client is audited five years from now, we know exactly why that transaction was booked that way. We have the document attached, the receipt, invoice, whatever it is. Um, we have the explanation detailed out in the transaction. Yes. So even a few years from now, we know exactly why we booked it that way. Right. And so the CPA or the tax preparer, they can actually pull that transaction up because they should have access to it too to see, okay, I understand why they did it this way. Right. And they they would have a clear understanding and maybe it wasn't booked correctly. Hopefully we did our job right, but they may see, okay, based on the information I'm given, we probably should book this differently. But if they don't have that information, how are they going to know that? Right. So I would say, you know, just as a side rant, make sure you have a good bookkeeping company like Secline. <laughs> because that considerably helps, especially if you're being represented in that audit by someone that didn't prepare the taxes. Yeah. Which, as we discussed, that could that happen, happen. Because your, your tax preparer, heaven forbid, may have died, may not be in business anymore, may have just gone MIA, maybe they're in a different state, who knows? Right. All things, all sorts of things can happen where the person representing you for that audit didn't prepare your taxes. So the more documentation that's that in those books, the better, because then they have more information to be able to help you when you're not, ba- battle's probably not the right word, with the IRS. <laughs> it can be a battle. <laughs> All right, so what else? Any, any other tips or tricks that you can think of when l- looking for a CPA? I know oh. we had talked about auditing or attesting. You had mentioned that. Yeah, so as your business grows, you're eventually going to want to go for financing to the bank. And so that bank may say, okay, let me see your audited financials where the accountant has looked at them and attested to the accuracy of those financials. So is that accountant going to be able to provide those financial documents in the format that the bank's expecting? Because otherwise the bank's not going to give you any financing because, you know, here's my QuickBooks, you know, just trust me, Mr. Bank mm-hmm. owner, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a good business owner. No, they want a third party like an accountant to look at those financials and basically say, yes, these are properly represented and this is the amount of money and the expenses that this business generates. And not every CPA does that. I mean, that's really kind of a specialized service, auditing. Yeah, that's right. Again, going back to where is their niche? Uh, If they're tax only, they're probably definitely not doing that. If If they're more of a financial accountant, they likely are. But then again, going back to your agreement, if you need that, 
what is going to be the cost of that? Right. Is it built in so that every year you have audited financials that you can take to your bank in, on January or when they complete your books so that you can get the financing you need for the coming year? In fact, that reminded me of something. You said January. Probably more than likely the books are not done by then. Probably not. But it would be good to have in writing in your agreement what is the deadline for yes. having the financials completed. Now, a lot of Not that, just annually, but I would say monthly and quarterly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So absolutely. you want a view of your business 12 months throughout the year, and you don't want to wait till the 13th month to find out how you did the right. previous 12. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But I would say this, a lot of that is on the bookkeeping mm -hmm. end of things, because the CPA can't do his or her job until the bookkeeping is right. complete. And maybe it's all under the same roof. A lot of people have their CPA offices also doing their bookkeeping. But if it's not, then it's on it's you know on the business owner to make sure that bookkeeping is up to date so the CPA can do their job. Well, and that raises a great point because if you're using a your own bookkeeper or you've hired someone like yourself, mm -hmm. is your account going to work with those individuals? Mm -hmm. And then are, is their technology compatible? Mm -hmm. So there's lots of um, financial software now for businesses. So if your bookkeeper's on one and your accountant's on another, are, is that technology going to talk to one another? So you really want to make sure and probably even maybe bring those two together once you're getting your your um, kind of at the end of your decision. Are you two going to work together? Right. And make sure that they're compatible. And yes. That's not going to create problems and delay for you. Yes, absolutely. That is so important. 100%. That is why part of my onboarding process is to find out who is preparing the taxes. Yeah immediately contact them and I try to meet with them so that we can both be on the same page about how we're going to do this going forward and have clear expectations between the right. two of us. And I always make sure that that CPA has access to anything we're doing, whether it's documents, the uh, software, whatever it is. I actually have it in my engagement letter that the client signs that I will be giving that to the CPA. That's great. So that way we have some continuity. We're all on the same page. And I always find out from them, what is your deadline? When do we need to have our bookkeeping done so you can have your tax deadlines and right. financials and everything on your side done? So it's really important to have that continuity. 100% I Absolutely. agree on that. So I would say one suggestion that would be great for business owners is to pull from their bad experiences to create some good interview questions going forward. Absolutely. More than likely, if they're looking for a CPA, they've had a bad experience. Not always, but that's probably more than likely why they're looking. So use those experiences to help those situations in the future, to help avoid them. Yes. So... Can you think of a, a situation that you've either heard about or experienced yourself where you pulled from a bad experience and used it to make sure it didn't happen again? Yeah. So, um, well, hopefully you don't have bad experience yes. as an established business owner. But if you've been in business long enough, there's probably a partner you worked with in your business, accountants, um, a, a supplier, provider that fell down on the job and, and left you hanging. And so you definitely use those experiences to make sure the next one that you go in and, and evaluate isn't going to trip up like that previous one. Do I have any specific ones? None come to mind. But then if you're a new business owner, you don't have those bad experiences. That's true. But if you're a business owner, if you're you know just entering a, the entrepreneurial space, you're likely networking with a lot of professionals. Go and ask them, what's your experience? Oh, been that's like? good. What have you learned about you know running your business and working with your accountant and just feverishly take down those notes. Yes. And those are your interview questions when you start talking to accountants. Because just because your buddy in the networking group has Joe as your accountant doesn't mean Joe's going to be the right fit for you. you. Right. And so you really need to make sure that that accountant that is being recommended to you is going to be a right fit. Yes. And then leveraging everyone's experiences in that kind of selection process. Yes, learn from someone else's mistakes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and the more we can do that, the better off we'll be, right? Absolutely. Because then we don't have to make the mistake to learn the lesson. <laughs> yes, yeah. They, they paid the price. You That's don't want right. to pay it again. <laughs> <laughs> this has been great information. I think this episode is going to be very valuable for a lot of business owners that are looking for tax well, professionals. You. So I really appreciate you doing this with me. Well, thank You're you for inviting me. You're a wealth of me. knowledge. <laughs>
<laughs> I've been around for a while. So <laughs> done a lot of different things. <laughs> That's awesome. So tell everyone how they can find you. Sure. So I love helping business owners work on their business, not in their business, by attracting and retaining motivated employees with great health insurance benefits. And so if I can help you do that, just Google Insure Me Steve, or you can go to insuremesteve.us. My phone number is 972-369-6111. And I'm on LinkedIn as well. It's kind of my social platform platform nice. of choice. So just go, uh, just search for Steve Stump and my headshot will be there. So just if you want to connect with me, I'm always happy to connect with other business owners. And how often do, do, can someone find a life and health insurance agent that has a CPA? That's very <laughs> unique. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I'm kind of a unicorn in that respect. But you also have a podcast. Yes, I do. Thank you for mentioning that. So my passion is helping business owners be successful in their business. So I um, host a podcast 100% on Not In Your Business, where we talk with other business owners and business coaches about making that transition from you know really being in the weeds in your business on a day-to-day -day basis and leveling up to work on your business so that you can grow your customer count, grow your revenue, keep your employees and develop them so that they can work in your business and allow you to work on it. I love that. All right. Well, it was great to have you. I think this has been a great episode. And everyone can find me at sakline.com, S-A-K-L-I-N-E.com, or email at info at sakline.com. And if you or anyone you know needs bookkeeping, I would love the opportunity to help them out. Until next time, everyone have a great week. Bye-bye. By the Books is presented by Sakline, honest, accurate bookkeeping performed on time. For more information on Sakline services, or to get a hold of Lindsay, visit sakline.com or email info at sakline.com. The information provided on this website and podcast does not and is not intended to constitute legal advice. Instead, all information, content, and materials available are for general information purposes only. Information provided by Sakline may not constitute the most up-to-date legal or other information. Listeners should contact their attorney to obtain advice with respect to any particular legal matter and should refrain from acting on the basis of this information without first seeking legal advice from counsel in the relevant jurisdiction. Only your individual attorney can provide assurances that the information contained herein and your interpretation of it is applicable or appropriate to your particular situation.